Praxis and today we are doing more carpentry work. Josh is upstairs, he's doing final sanding on the first room that we completed so we can start using that as a storage room. I'd love to get that space just done with the exception of you know wood seals and any stain or anything like that. But we can just get stuff kind of stored in there, get it up and out of the way. And that's what I wanted to talk about today is a bit about organization. Uh, as you can see, when I just made that cut, I just tossed my scrap over here and it's like just a, ge a generic messy scrap pile. And that's fine, you know, for things like this that you know you're never going to use. But this piece here might actually get used. There's lots of applications where you might want to have this between a couple of studs or something like that. So any piece that has any conceivable possibility of being used, what I'm actually doing with them is I'm trying to organize them. Here are a bunch of short little 2 by 4 sections right there. And uh, the more that I can keep stuff organized, the less waste that I'm going to have overall, the less new lumber that I'm going to have to buy and bring in. We've done really well with the, with the wood that we've had because we've minimized waste so much. If you look behind you, uh, you can see I finished up the wall that I was just beginning to work on yesterday. And there was very, very little scrap that I, uh, accumulated when I was creating that wall. And that comes from two uh, places. One is uh, figuring out exactly where to put the seams so that I could maximize the way that I was using these boards. Uh, and also, I, I kind of adjusted the placement of the door uh, just very slightly so that I was able to use some pieces of wood uh, to make it so that there was less scrap. And I'll just give you an example. If I was to make the door uh, six foot one inches away from one wall, I wouldn't be able to uh, take a 12 foot board and get more than one uh, piece out of that 12 foot board to do a contiguous run. But if I could move that door just over one inch, that makes a 12 foot board get cut in half and you get two full six foot runs instead of one that's six foot one and the other uh, is, you know, five foot 11 inches. So if you uh, think ahead when you're laying things out and planning things, you can create situations where you don't have as much scrap and then, you know, once you get into it, this scrap pile is going to be a lot smaller because each one of these pieces, this is actually, this is uh, the scrap off of the 12 foot boards that I accumulated for doing that. Whenever you can make these pieces smaller and keep your pile of uncut fresh lumber bigger and uh, you know more, more stock, you're going to avoid being in the situation where you run out of lumber and you have to go out and buy this stuff. And this stuff isn't cheap. It's one thing, you know, when you buy the whole kit and it comes and it's like, oh, it was, you know, it was tens of thousands of dollars and I got all these loads and everything. You can tend to maybe not appreciate the wood as much, but if you went out and you wanted to buy one of these boards, I think they're they're like 12 or 15 bucks per board. So every time I can avoid cutting a board uh, and uh, you know creating waste with it, that's saving me a substantial amount of money, especially if it prevents me having to go out and buy new wood. And I am gonna have to buy new wood one way or the other because we're building the shed. I, this kit does not cover the shed, but if I can be really, really uh, efficient with the way I use the, all these boards, I may have enough left over, so I almost have to buy none for that shed. So I am going to save myself a substantial amount of money by having pieces of scrap that are this size instead of that big. That's it. Thanks for watching.